So once, once the user is visiting that page, it will automatically be logged and, and accessible in the Beef console from here. An attacker uh, we using Beef always has been able to send uh, custom JavaScript code and even there are some exploits for browsers available right now. Well, this is the model I have developed. Uh, by pressing this button, uh, what should happen here is the following. Uh, the web server will send uh, the client code uh, for uh, appending a dynamic uh, SMB referenced image. So the, the server should uh, learn th this information from the, from the victim. Okay, I have to select it first. And let's go again. After this, uh, the server is automatically uh, building the files that should be uh, targeted right now. Here, if you see the, the URL has changed because a redirection has occurred to another web page, which is indeed loading the local index that file from the victim. As I wrote a, a specific code in a specific HTML and scripting code in those files, uh, I have enabled some functions in, in that file to access the, the client's computer. For example, here is the folder for uploads and let's see if I, I can get the boot any file from the, from the C hard drive. If you take a look to the, it's difficult to, to look at both at the same time, but if you take a look at this page, this page won't, won't change. Uh, it will keep the same because it's just uh, submitting a form and receiving a 206 no content response, so it will not do anything. It will not change. This way we can get every file you w we want, but let's get some interesting files. For example, documents and settings. Uh, Jorge, because this is my username. Cookies index that. Then I get this file. Is it, it is here. I built a script to, to parse this file. Let me go there. Mm. Uh, let's parse this file. You can read uh, the, the screen? Yeah. Right. Um, well, let's put it all in a text file. And then we can uh, try to access directly uh, each of these files. Some of these files per perhaps can, uh, perhaps uh, are expired, but most of them should be there. If I try, for example, this one, let's see what happens. It was there actually. So uh, the cook is this one. And as you can see, we managed to get not, not the cookies for random domains, but the cookies for all of the domains the user has set. This way we can also access uh, another interesting files. For example, in local settings, uh, history, history, uh, IA5, index that again. This is another of the tracking files, and it is indeed the one I'm using uh, 
uh, with HTML code inside uh, and loading that file in the in the victims. If you click here, you will see here is loaded the file, but I just hidden it for uh, for statics. <laughs> then we can parse that file also. Uh, local settings. Let's put it in history. Let's open it and see what can we get from that computer. Let's change it a bit so I can access it directly. And we can, for example, try to get this file, which is actually in the desktop, but it is in this file because I have accessed it uh, some time ago. So it got uh, written in the, in the tracking file. Then in the uploads, it should be this file that is uh, in fact, the, the white paper I wrote about this with more detail on all of the things we have discussed so far. Well, this way you can access every file the user has been working with uh, since the last time he cleaned his browsing history. I think that's not, not so common. At least I don't do that uh, quite often. It also includes pictures, and even if you get access to the thumb DB files in the My Pictures folder, you can track all of the files in the, in, in the current folder and even access the, the, the thumbnails that are installed in those files. For example, this is one of my pictures in, in my folder with some friends of mine in my hometown. Um, well, um, when we started uh, publishing this, this line of attacks, we had uh, not the full knowledge of what was really going on because we as Internet Explorer is, is a source, a closed source uh, product, uh, it's not easy to to see what is happening behind scenes. So we were learning more and more about this uh, this problem uh, uh, as the time was uh, passing. So uh, in the in the CVE, uh, in the first CVE that was published, it was treated as it, if it was a uh, zone elevation issue. And as we saw, it is not. There is no zone elevation. We're not elevating anything. It, it's just intended functionality, abused in a, in a way. Uh, and even the, the, the CV for, the, for one of the last uh, advisories we published tags it as a cross-domain information disclosure vulnerability, which is not. Uh, it is also a cross-domain information vulnerability because you can actually access information of other domains, but you can access it actually all of the information in the local drive, so it's more than that, I think. And as we saw along the, the presentation, both of the problems are the same. So let's discuss, discuss some workarounds because uh, by now uh, Internet Explorer is actually vulnerable to this uh, attack. There is no fix yet. Uh, so let's see what we can do about it. Uh, one of the things that can be done is locking down the Internet Explorer network protocol. That is a, a setting that you have to set in the, in the registry or in the, in the internet configuration for your computer from the control panel. You should uh, basically disable the